Hi, I'm Kelly, and this is the owner's class for your Singer Simple 3337 sewing machine. Today we're going to go through some of the basics on your machine, like how to get your needle threaded, how to select a stitch, and also how to make a buttonhole. In your box, you get two really great resources. Your instruction manual, which has a bunch of information about your machine, and also a quick start guide. And this is your cheat sheet on how to get your machine threaded and started sewing quickly. Now let's take a tour of your machine. To the right of your machine is the port where your power control and your foot pedal are plugged in. Also, this is where we'll turn on our machine with the power switch. This is your hand wheel. You use this to manually raise and lower your take-up lever and your needle. You'll see the arrows here remind you to always turn the wheel towards yourself. At the top of your machine is your bobbin winding spindle. We'll use this later when we go to make a bobbin. On the back we have a handle which makes your machine extremely portable. Over here are a couple of threading guides which we'll talk about a little bit later. This is your bobbin winding tension disc which we'll use to wind a bobbin. And over here you'll see this is your take-up lever and this will be used when we thread the machine. This is our tension dial, which we use to fine tune the look of our stitches. This is your reverse lever. To the right, you'll find your stitch length dial. And below that is your stitch selection dial. So you can turn this to pick the stitch you wanna sew. Over here is your presser foot. And this is where your bobbin case, where you'll put your bobbin. This is your presser foot lifter. We use this to raise and lower our presser foot. We raise the presser foot up when we are threading and we place it down when we are sewing. In front, you have a removable storage compartment so you can slide that off and inside are some additional accessories that come with your machine. Some needles, some extra bobbins, a spool cap, and some additional accessory feet. Let's take a look at those now. The zipper foot is used for sewing zippers into your projects. Use the buttonhole foot to sew buttonholes in one easy step. The machine sews a buttonhole perfectly sized for your button. You'll get professional looking results every time. Sew buttons on your projects with the button sewing foot. Your button is held firmly in place as the machine attaches the button to your project with a zigzag stitch. Sewing accurate seams is easy with the Sew Easy foot. It has an adjustable guide at the right, which you can set wherever you want for your project. Just keep the edge of the fabric up against the guide as you sew. Now we're gonna thread our machine. To thread our machine, we first start by winding a bobbin. You can get your bobbin from the bobbin case which is located next to your presser foot. To the right of the case, there is a black button that you can push to the right. Now we can lift up our lid and take out our bobbin. This bobbin is a class 15 transparent bobbin. Your machine was designed to use this bobbin. So if you need to go buy more, make sure it is a class 15 transparent bobbin. Now let's take our spool of thread and we'll go to the top of our machine where we can access our spool pin. We'll slide our thread on there and then we'll put on our spool cap and lay it down. Now you'll notice at the top of your machine you have some diagrams. You have a series of gray diagrams for threading your needle and then you have a series of blue diagrams on how to wind your bobbin. So we're going to follow along with the blue drawings. Step one tells us to go through our first thread guide. So we'll take our thread and just slip it right into that thread guide. Next, it tells us to go in front of our bobbin winding tension disc. So we're gonna go through the, this side and then wrap it around. And you should feel a little bit of a tug because there should be some tension in there. Now we're gonna go 
to step two and three. We'll take our bobbin and there are holes on both sides of the bobbin. From the center, you'll take your thread and run it straight up through one of those holes to the top of your bobbin. Now we'll place our bobbin on top of our bobbin winding spool and you'll wanna make sure it's snapped all the way down and keep holding the end of your thread. Now we're gonna push our bobbin to the right. Now we can step on our foot control and go around for just a moment. At this point, I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna trim down close to the bobbin so our thread isn't sticking up on top. And now we can finish winding the bobbin. And you can do this for as long as you need to, depending upon your project. But if you wanna have a full bobbin, you can continue to wind it and it will automatically stop when it's full. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and stop. And now we'll push, we'll undo what we just did by pushing our bobbin to the left. We'll take our bobbin off of our spindle here and now we can just trim the bobbin thread from our spool of thread. So we're gonna take our bobbin down to our bobbin case and to put our bobbin in properly, we need to make sure that our thread is going to the left or counterclockwise off our bobbin. Another way to tell if you're doing it right is to look at it and make sure that the bobbin and the thread is making the letter P. So now we're gonna lay our bobbin in our bobbin case. And then using the arrows, on your machine, we're just gonna follow those arrows with our thread. So we're gonna go down and around, and then up, and down, and then when we go slightly to the right, there's a cutter in there that will cut the thread for us automatically. And the final step is to put our case back on. Now we're gonna thread the top of our machine. There are two things we need to make sure that we do first before we thread our needle. We need to make sure that our presser foot and our presser foot lifter is in the up position. Also, we need to make sure that we can see our take-up lever. If you don't see it and it looks something like this, then turn the hand wheel towards you until you can see it. And now we can take our spool of thread and put it on our spool pin and cover with our spool cap. Using our gray set of diagrams, we're just gonna follow the instructions. So our first step is to take our thread through the first metal thread guide. Now from the back of the machine and then forward, we're gonna go through our second metal thread guide. We're just following the arrows now down the groove and following the arrows. And then at four, we're gonna make a U-turn and go back up. And then at this point, we wanna take our thread to the right of our take-up lever. And then we're gonna follow the diagram and go all the way up and around, and then down to the left of our take-up lever. And when you pull on your thread, you'll see that it needs to go into the eye of your take-up lever right at the end. If you don't get that through that eye, your sewing machine will not sew. Now that we've threaded our thread through the eye of our take-up lever, we're gonna follow down to the number six through this groove. At this point, there's a small metal hook that we just need to put our thread behind. And using our diagram to the left, we need to put our thread behind one more hook, which is right above your needle. And to use your automatic needle threader, we first need to make sure that our needle is in its highest position. And to do that, you wanna turn your hand wheel towards yourself And now our needle is in its highest position. So using the lever to the side, we're gonna push this all the way down until it turns toward your needle. And now we'll take our thread and we're gonna wrap this under this metal hook to the left and then around. Then we're gonna take our thread and go through and to the back. And then when we let go, our automatic needle threader produces a small loop behind our needle. So now we can just slightly pull on that 
and our machine is threaded. Before we get started sewing, we need to select our stitch. So we're going to use the stitch selector dial. You can see all the different stitches that are included on your machine on this dial. When you turn the dial, you'll feel a click. And when it clicks, a set of stitches lines up underneath this marking on your machine. I want to do a straight stitch. So I'm going to turn back to our straight stitch. You'll notice there are three different stitches at my marking here. So how do I know which one I'm going to sew out? We'll select the stitch that we want to sew using our stitch length dial. So for example, the gray one here, we'll use one of the gray numbers up here in our stitch length. For a blue stitch, we're going to turn our stitch length dial to the blue. And for the red stitch, we'll turn our dial to the red. So I want to do just a regular straight stitch. So I'm going to turn my dial back to the stitch length in the gray zone here. And I'm going to go for an, an average everyday number of two and a half. So now let's try it. I've got some scrap fabric here, and I'm just going to put this under our presser foot. And now from the back, we're going to lower our presser foot down onto our fabric. Now we get to use our foot control, and you want to just press down on your foot control to start sewing. When we're at the end of our fabric, we need to lift our presser foot, and then you can take your fabric over to the side of your machine where there's a cutter. After we finish cutting our thread, we can take a closer look at our sample stitch that we've sewn to see if we've threaded our machine properly. So I'm going to look at both sides, and both sides look just fine. I've got a sample here for when a machine wasn't threaded properly. So the top of it looks just fine. On the bottom, the thread looks a little messy and there's a bunch of loops. So even though this is the bottom of my thread, it's an indication that it's not the bobbin, but it's our upper thread that needs to be re-threaded. So you can always go back to your quick start guide or your cheat sheet and re-thread your machine. My stitch selection dial is still set to our straight stitch and I've grabbed some of my project fabric. So now I'm going to look at my stitch plate that's underneath our presser foot and you'll see the series of lines. I'm going to look for the 5 8 inch line because that's what my project calls for is a 5 8 inch seam allowance. So I'm going to line my fabric up with that 5 8 inch seam allowance line underneath the presser foot and then I'm going to reach around and lower our presser foot using the presser foot lifter. I'm going to step on our foot control and I'm going to go about three or four stitches and I'm going to push down on our reverse lever and go back over those same three or four stitches. I'm going to release the lever and then continue sewing my straight stitch. Remember not to push or pull your fabric. All you need to do is guide it. When we get to the end, I'm going to push down on our reverse lever again, go back three or four stitches, and then let the stitch finish. If your needle happens to be down in your fabric, you can always raise it by turning the hand wheel toward yourself. Now we need to raise our presser foot using the lifter on the back, and we'll take our fabric to the side and using our cutter, we'll cut our thread. And we did the reverse stitches at the beginning and the end of our seam to make sure that our project doesn't unravel. We just finished sewing a seam using the seam allowance markings on our stitch plate. When you're just starting out sewing, sometimes it can be a little difficult to keep our seams perfectly straight by just using those markings. With your machine, you get this so easy foot. And this foot is awesome because it helps us guide our fabric and keep our seam straight. This acts as a physical edge for our fabric. So now we can keep that nice straight stitch. And you can see the markings on here show the different seam allowances. 
So we can just move those to whatever we need for our project. Now let me show you how to change the presser foot. Gently hold your foot from the front and the back and press forward and it'll snap out of this groove. Now we can remove the foot and then taking our so easy foot, we can line the small metal bar here with the groove on our ankle. So we can line this up and then we'll just gently push back and snap into place. And now our foot is ready for use. Now let's set our guide to 5 8 inch seam allowance. We can take some fabric and we can butt that up against the guide of your foot. And then we'll lower our presser foot down. And so now you'll see the fabric goes up against the edge of this guide and this will help allow us to keep our seam straight. So let's press down on our foot control for a straight stitch. And now you know why we named this foot the So Easy Foot. <laughs> so now we need to raise our presser foot, but also we need to raise our needle using our hand wheel toward ourselves. And we'll take our fabric and go to the side. And now you see how easy it was to keep our seam straight. Now we're gonna try some of your other stitches. We're gonna use our stitch selection dial and I'm gonna to turn to our multi zigzag stitch. And you'll notice there are three stitches here. The multi zigzag is our gray stitch. So I'm gonna to go to my stitch length dial to set the stitch length to two. So let's see how that looks. We'll put our fabric under our presser foot and then we lower our presser foot from the back and we press on our foot control. Guiding our fabric and not pushing or pulling. I'm gonna raise our needle, lift our presser foot and take the thread over to the side and use the cutter to cut our thread. And now we can see our zigzag. Now let's try our blue stitch which is our honeycomb stitch. To do that, we go up to our stitch length dial and we turn to the blue. And now we can stitch out a honeycomb stitch. Place your fabric under your presser foot, lower your presser foot, and then press on your foot control. Raise our needle, raise our presser foot, and then we can cut our thread on the side. Now we can look at our beautiful honeycomb stitch. So now let's select our red stitch, which is the feather stitch. We're gonna go back up to our stitch length dial and turn to red. Let's stitch that out. Lower our presser foot with our fabric underneath and we'll press our pedal down. Raise our needle, raise our presser foot, and then cut our thread. And now we have our feather stitch. So we have three different stitches, and all we had to do was change our stitch length dial. Now let's make a buttonhole.
Now let's mark our fabric for our buttonhole. So we'll take our button and lay it on the fabric wherever you want to put your buttonhole. And then at the bottom of your button, make a line. Now we'll take a ruler and to the top of our line, we'll draw another line, making a T. Now we're ready to sew our buttonhole. To make a buttonhole, we need to change our presser foot. Inside your removable storage compartment, you'll find your buttonhole foot. At the top of your foot is an adjustable slider. We can take the button that we plan on using and place it right there in your foot and now we can slide so that our foot secures our button. Now we need to remove our current presser foot and we'll just gently push from the back and now we can put on our buttonhole foot. So we'll slide that under, and then we'll put the metal bar through the groove and snap it into place. Now we need to select our buttonhole stitch. So using our stitch selection dial, we'll turn to the image of the buttonhole. Now we're gonna turn the stitch length dial to the buttonhole zone. You can put it wherever you want within the buttonhole zone. Depending upon your project, you can set your stitch length to be closer together or farther apart. So now let's sew our buttonhole. Now we're ready to stitch out our buttonhole. We have our marked fabric with our upside down T. The bottom of your T will be where the bottom of your buttonhole is stitch. We have our buttonhole foot on our machine and our stitches are set to the buttonhole. So now let's place our fabric under our presser foot and we're gonna line the bottom of your T into the hole right underneath your needle. So when you get that lined up, we can lower our presser foot. And then we have one last important step. You have a buttonhole lever at the back of your machine that you want to pull all the way down. And now just reading it, it tells us to push. So we're going to push that to the back. And now we're ready to sew out our buttonhole. Our buttonhole is finished, so we can raise our needle. Now we can raise the presser foot. And we're just going to pull that to the side. And using our cutter at the side, we're going to trim our thread. And the final step to finish your buttonhole is to find your starting thread. I'm just taking a pair of scissors, we're going to trim that close to our fabric. And now you'll want to have a hand needle handy and thread your hand needle with the finishing thread from your buttonhole. And thread it through the eye of your hand needle, and then sew it to the back of your fabric, and then tie a knot or tie off your stitch so that your buttonhole will not unravel. If you wanna make additional buttonholes, repeat this process and just mark another T, place it under your foot, and the only other thing you need to do is to push back your lever again. So anytime you go to make an additional buttonhole, push back your buttonhole lever. A quick tip for cutting open your buttonhole is to take a pin and right under your bar tack stitch, place your pin through your fabric. And now we can use the seam ripper that's included with your machine. And going from the bottom of our buttonhole, we can just go all the way up and the pin prevents us from cutting through our stitches at the top of our buttonhole. So now you can take your pin out and your buttonhole is open. There are two basic styles of needles. We have regular point needles and ballpoint needles. Our regular point needles are for our non-stretchy fabrics like cotton or wool or silk. These also come in an assortment of sizes depending on the weight of your fabric. They range from lightweight to medium weight to heavyweight. Our ballpoint needles 
are for our stretchy fabrics, like t-shirts or sweatshirts or swimsuit fabrics. And those also come in an assortment of sizes, from lightweight to heavyweight. To change your needle, all we have to do is go to the right of your needle and you'll see a small silver knob that you'll turn to the left or counterclockwise towards yourself and just loosen slightly so that our needle will drop down. And now we can take our new needle and you wanna note that there's a flat side on a part of your needle and that flat side needs to go toward the back of your machine and then we're gonna place that back where our previous needle was and scoot it all the way to the top. And now we'll use that same knob and then tighten to the right. Super easy. I hope you've enjoyed this owner's class. Be sure to check out the Singer website for more information. Happy sewing!